In this video, I am going to be talking about uh, C++ HTL containers called STDDQ. STDDQ is a HTL class container for managing elements or objects of double ended queue or the for managing the elements or objects as a double ended queue. The elements or objects may be added or removed very efficiently from the both sides from the both ends of the queue. Insertion and removal of elements is order of yeah, in general. However, insertion and deletion at the beginning and end is order n, a constant. Therefore, it is very efficient to remove and add element uh, from the beginning and end of the queue. Therefore, it is specially designed to be efficient to be used to insert or remove element from either end from the um, from the either, either side or either end of the the sequential container which is pretty cheap order and constant uh, complexity is pretty cheap in stdq random access of its elements uh, cost uh, order one it's very fast and it's comparable to that of uh, the vector right so Again, to emphasize it, uh, in this container, if we attempt to, to access the elements on the two ends of the sequential container, uh, the cost is um, similar to that of the random access in vector container, std vector. DQ is based on its uh, objects taking dynamic memory space, uh, like in the vector and in the list but uh, it is not necessarily contiguously conti uh, allocated like in the vector and it is not also very totally completely um, spread across the dynamic memory space like in the list. So, in terms of the memory space allocated for the data in this uh, container, uh, you can see this as um, ki kind of a um, compromise between the vector and list. Typically, the memory allocated looks like a sequence of fixed size arrays where the fixed size array are contiguously allocated in dynamic memory space, but those arrays are actually dispersed in that in the same space. Let me start uh, uh, discussing it through coding. To use uh, a DQ container, I need to include library called DQ. This is needed for the container and you can create a, uh, an object of this class because this is a template class so you need to specify the type you want to instantiate the template for. This is the name of the class and I want to instantiate it for integer type and the name you can give uh, let me have uh, my uh, dq. So this is uh, the name I have given for this data structure. So now I can uh, assign data into it. This is empty. This is going to be empty. So let me have a function to display uh, the the content of the queue, so that it will be easy for me to call that function to display the data whenever some change is made or a new object is created. So I'm going to create a temporary class. So temporary function. This is going to be let me call it container because uh, this function can be used for uh, all types because this template so I can call this function for vector dq list and so on and uh, you can you call a fun uh, through the dq object you can call so this is a ctr object uh, I can call assuming that this is uh, the dq object I can call empty function to check whether it's empty or not I'm um, if, if it is not empty or if it is empty I could uh, display uh, some message uh, indicating that the container is empty and 
and uh, and you will just return it otherwise uh, you can uh, iterate in a loop and display it and so this should uh, display the data if it is not empty if empty it will display empty container uh, this text So let me um, see what uh, uh, let me call this print function with this object. So this should uh, my expectation is that uh, it, it should display empty container text. Now compilation G plus plus warning. Compiler C plus plus twenty. I'm using twenty three uh, compiler, and uh, output file is going to be main one dot exe, and source file is uh, main one dot exe, cpp. Now I'm going to run this. Uh, so it displayed empty content. That means uh, it was empty. Uh, obviously that is expected because if you create a, a object by calling the default constructor it is going to be empty and you can uh, assign data to it by through this assign function if I want to assign um, few elements into it let us say um, 5 and 8 then print the data I think there is a small problem with uh, the the code and the name used so it should be my dq right so now you can see in the previous case it was empty now after the things were assigned to it, it is displaying data, right? So it's not empty anymore. And you can also insert elements by calling the function pushback. Let's say 11. So this is uh, my double ended queue and also we can push from the front. So these are some of the functionalities. Um, let me make sure that uh, uh, these uh, functions actually work in the code uh, compilation successful that means there is no compilation error so now uh, we had uh, the container with data 5 yet and it was uh, pushed back 11 and 22 was pushed back um, into attempts and 33 was actually pushed front so 33 has been pushed on the front and 11 22 have been pushed on the back side Uh, it uh, this container allows uh, the use of uh, the uh, subscripting operator and add function like uh, if I want to access uh, let's say uh, third element in it I can use this uh, operator with uh, the object so it will give me access to the third element And 
and uh, let me have three. And also, I want to access uh, the LMS using uh, add function. Now compilation and uh, the output. So you can see at and 11 were the elements with index uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. 2 and 3. So these elements were actually accessed through this indexing. So this kind of indexing is not available with uh, the list, but uh, it is also available with uh, the vector. So the, both this function, but uh, you know. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, kind of access uh, it doesn't check uh, the whether this uh, index is valid or not but in this case it will check the index is valid so if i try to access uh, the uh, the the data with uh, index which is, which is out of range for example uh, if it is let's say 6 in this case i hope we don't have 6 elements 1 2 3 4 5 yeah, and if I try to access with uh, 6, so it should uh, the second atom, this atom should actually complain. So uh, it's not complaining, but it is actually um, in the first attempt. No, it is not displaying things. Okay, so it is actually uh, because uh, the outcome of that uh, second statement is uh, not being displayed. Uh, this one, because you know, in this case, if you try to access like this, then it will actually throw an exception. So if you ha if you handle the exception, then it can display the uh, that information. For example. Uh, if I let me just put it like this. So if I put this in uh, the try and cast block, and uh, display some messages uh, just to see whether exception happened or not. So, if actually ex exception happened, then uh, it will actually uh, this uh, message is going to be displayed on the uh, output stream. My keyboard is not working.
uh, the problem was uh, I used the same variable. I happen to use the same name of with the container, so I I, can, I shouldn't be using this. Maybe uh, use a count or something like this. Uh, city. So. So now I think uh, so uh, this was uh, the address of the elements of the content that was created earlier. You can see the address uh, um, is separated by uh, four bytes. For example, two f five two zero. The second element five two four eight c nine a b c and c d e f zero. So all these are separated uh, by four bytes that is uh, the byte size of integer so um, you can go two three four five six seven eight nine up to this point right so uh, it was uh, the last uh, the address of the last element is was uh, two six ac so once it was added So uh, A6 AC, let me find that out. So this was uh, the element. And uh, AC uh, B0. E C D E F zero one. So now here. Now at this point, after this point, uh, there is uh, the, the 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 break. So from a two A seven one C. To it jump to 2a9f0, which is not consecutive at this point, and uh, this uh, address of this um, uh, element actually lies in between this uh, uh, address and this address. So, right. So, uh, all these elements are actually placed in a consecutive memory space up to this point and after that these are actually placed in another consecutive memory space but uh, these uh, two uh, addresses I mean two these two addresses arrays uh, are actually dispersed they are not consecutive so this is the way uh, these things are organized um, I mean the memory spaces are organized in the case of uh, the DQ so uh, if you look from this uh, uh, memory address to this memory address it would appear like uh, the vector but if you and if you look into this memory space to this memory space it will also look like a vector because they are consecutive in dynamic memory space but if you look uh, across this uh, two spaces then it may look like um, they are connected uh, uh, using a way that si that looks similar to uh, the list the way the elements are connected in the list okay that uh, is what I actually wanted to explain I hope it was clear to you if not let me know by typing things comments in the chat box on the bottom of the video so I discussed the continuous DQ and uh, this is the end of the video thank you for watching